from Southern Colorado's high-definition news leader. This is News Channel 13, where the news comes first. Damaging weather across the region tonight, from a damaged bridge to flooded roads and a tornado. We have all the jaw-dropping pictures and video, plus... You can see the hail pounded through the light panels above this. Only on 13, storm damage hits National Mill Dog Rescue. Tonight, the damage and the impact on the animals. Mother Nature isn't done with us just yet. We are continuing to track strong storms around the area. I will show you how long these severe storms are expected to last and what this means for your morning drive coming up next. And solidarity for Orlando. Tonight, the Pueblo Vigil. And you need to hear what happened to Southern Colorado's first openly gay state lawmaker. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. For KRDO News Channel 13 at 10, I'm James Jarman. And I'm Heather Scold. And first up tonight, severe weather across the region. Yeah, the storms hitting tonight cause scattered power outages in Colorado Springs right now. This comes after flash floods hit parts of the city earlier. Sand Creek burst over its banks, damaging that bridge in eastern Colorado Springs. And we have live team coverage tonight. Bart Bedsole live on the east side of Colorado Springs. But first, Storm Tracker 13 Chief Meteorologist Rachel Plath is tracking the storms and our forecast for tomorrow. Rachel? Yeah, guys, it has been a very active afternoon and evening around southern Colorado, and the storms aren't done with us just yet. A severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect for that yellow box on your screen. This includes Falcon up toward Payton, Ellicott as well. That will stay in effect until 10 o'clock. Now, this storm is still producing some heavy rain, the potential for one inch in diameter hail, and the potential for 60 mile per hour gusts. Which means the National Weather Service may extend this warning for a bit longer. We'll keep you posted as to if that is expected to happen. We're also tracking a flash flood warning for the green box on your screen, which includes Colorado Springs Widefield out toward Ellicott. We have had a lot of rain out there today, and with this latest round moving through, that has not only brought us more water, but unfortunately, that water has nowhere to go with already saturated grounds. That being said, we are tracking ponding on the roads along with uh, some rising of the creeks and rivers. That we have running through the area, so keep that in mind as you are out and about. If you do have somewhere to be yet this evening, you do not want to drive through any areas of standing or rushing water. Now, the area where we're most likely to see some of the heaviest rain and largest hail, right near Shriver Air Force Base, heading toward Peyton Highway. We will continue to track this storm very, very closely. Again, a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for the next couple of minutes. We'll be back to let you know if that warning gets extended here coming up in just a little bit. James and Heather, back to you. All right, thanks so much. And let's Let's get you out now to KRDO News Channel 13's Bart Bedsell, who talked to those hit hardest by the rain and hail. And James, Robodeau Circle out here tonight is more like Robodeau Semicircle. You can't cross the bridge behind me. It's taped off and coned off. The water came down the creek so fast earlier, it literally broke apart the pavement here. It's one of many spots around the southeast part of Colorado Springs that became impassable today during today's rain. Charles Fleming shot this video as the water hammered the bridge outside his house. When it was over, chunks of pavement piled on top of each other. The actual stream was flowing over the bridge. I'm just thinking it was a cool thing to see, and I also thought, uh, I hope that doesn't get up to my house. I lived here 28 years. I've never seen it like this. This was the worst it's ever been. Farther downstream, a volcano of water in Spring Creek under Highway 24 as it hit the support beams. Drivers did what they could to dodge the high water, and some roads like Verde near Circle were shut down entirely, although not soon enough for lots of drivers, including this one. One car almost got stuck. They pushed them back out, and then that's when the police and the fire truck showed up. But maybe the worst damage was to homes along Wold Road. Yeah, more and more just. It's coming down. High water in the canal behind Tiffany Bishop's home literally washed away some of her backyard. We grabbed all the dogs and we brought them inside. When I came outside, the other half of my fence was gone. All she could do was sit and watch as the creek ate away her property inch by inch. 
Now, in addition to road damage at certain spots around town, you also have a lot of this rocks and stones and gravel that has been washed out of people's landscaping and the, the roadside piles into the road. Let me tell you, you can't see it when you're coming down the road, so keep an eye out, especially when it's dark for these piles of roads. It's almost like driving on ice, very dangerous. So keep that in mind if you're on the roads tonight or even on your way to work tomorrow. Live in Colorado Springs, Bart Bedsel, KRDO, News Channel 13. Quite the damage out there. Thanks, Bart. And hail and wind battered National Mill Dog Rescue's building in eastern El Paso County. Volunteers scrambled to help dogs as hail pelted them and water soaked their kennels. KRDO News Channel 13's Emily Allen has a story you'll only see here. <laughs> Teresa Strader has rescued thousands of dogs. And as you can see, the hail pounded through the light panels above this. But this time, Water it's the rescuer that needs help. Here, soak these ceiling tiles and just collapse the whole ceiling. It only took 10 minutes for Hale to do all this damage to National Mill Dog Rescue. We were all pretty rattled. I mean, it's not funny to go through something like that when you have all these little lives that are, you know, relying on safety and, and security here. You can see all up here, that, I mean, that sky you see up there. Therese Black was inside when the storm hit. I've not been in a hailstorm like this and I've lived here my entire life. Hail smashed through the ceiling, pelting dogs and flooding the floor. It's very stressful. We don't like our dogs to be, they've already come from a bad situation. They live in metal buildings. This freaks them out really bad to have to hear this and it's just a reminiscent of that. There are chunks of the ceiling just scattered all over this building. They are wet and waterlogged, and it is going to be tough to clean all this up. You know, it was jarring. It was very jarring to walk in the building and see all this. I mean, it was really spooky. Volunteers rescued more dogs last week, so there's not much room to spare. And until the roof is patched up, parts of the building are out of commission. For now, some dogs are going to foster families. While others will stay in smaller kennels. Strader says at the end of the day, the dogs are okay. And that's what matters most. In El Paso County, Emily Allen Cardio, News Channel 13. Strader said she's grateful for all the volunteers who responded quickly to help her. Well, the National Weather Service confirmed a tornado touched down near Trinidad today. Viewer Kathy Milner, she posted. This picture of that tornado. Now, the National Weather Service says the tornado touched down about 15 miles east of Trinidad. No reports of any damage or injuries there. New tonight at 10 o'clock, people in Trinidad are cleaning up storm damage. Take a look at the video from Trinidad State Junior College. The quick storm caused major flooding and damaged homes and businesses. Purgatory Valley Construction had water running from the street into their store. A few blocks away, golf ball size hail fell. The storm also brought down trees and branches throughout the town. All this area was pretty much a lake from, from that intersection to almost the other intersection. I've, I've never seen hail that large. Not here. Not here, you know. That was kind of unusual for it to come through town like that. A lot of damage, and we may not find out the cost of all that damage in Trinidad for a few days. The weather is being blamed for a man's death in La Junta tonight. A microburst moved the man's trailer about 40 feet last night. The Otero County Sheriff's Office says a 50 year old man from Arkansas died. The man's identity has not been released. And as always, you help us tell the weather story with your pictures and video. We set up a slideshow over on our website, KRDO.com. Well, now to the very latest on the nightclub massacre in Orlando. All 49 people killed in that attack have been identified tonight. And President Obama announced tonight he will be in Florida on Thursday to pay respects to the victims. And we're hearing about the heroic actions of those who helped the injured in the attack. Malcolm Barraza, wearing his hat backwards, you see right there in this video, got out of the Pulse nightclub without any injuries. He stayed there, though, to help others even as the gunshots continued. My natural instinct was to, you know, yell everybody, give them energy, like, come on, we have to do this, we have to pick him up, we have to, let's go, let's go, pick him up. And I'm, I'm looking at them, screaming at them to get this guy to a truck because I know that in those instances, like, seconds matter. Well, tonight, the FBI admits agents investigated the shooter, Omar Mateen, three times, not two. And he was under surveillance for more than a year. But the FBI says agents never found any hard evidence that he was an actual threat. 
Vigils continue tonight in southern Colorado for the 49 people killed and the dozens injured in that shooting. New tonight, KRDO News Channel 13's Greg Miller is live in Pueblo at Sister City Plaza where a March for Peace just wrapped up. And Greg, one state lawmaker says even in the midst of these supportive events, there's still hatred. Well, Heather, gay straight everyone was invited, and about 150 people came out to show their support tonight at a vigil here in Pueblo that ended at this location. But one Southern Colorado state representative who is openly gay says while the massive, sign, the massive show of support has been a good sign, there is still a long way to go. Then Eugene Crosby. Nearly two days later, the pain is still so real. Great sorrow, you know, for the families and for the victims. Their quest for equality still so important. You can't judge people. You can't judge. Gay and straight, all came together in song Violence and, hatred. and prayer. And we found our friends, and we came together as a community to be together and to grieve. Representative Denea Esgar is Southern Colorado's first openly gay state representative. She says she still mourns. You want to be angry, and I understand why people are angry, but hate doesn't win over hate. Love is the only thing that conquers hate. Escar says she was proud of that show of support. 150 people came to the vigil here in Pueblo, but she says that show of support hasn't been with everyone. I wrote something out of the depth of my heart on my state representative Facebook page on Sunday, and within 17 minutes it had 121 shares, but it also had over 78 comments, and they were nothing but hatred. People telling me I should resign from office because I'm gay. She took the post down, fearing it was only making the situation worse. That hit me hard. But as she looks around at local support, she finds hope. Say we won't tolerate this kind of hate to put their arms around our gay community in Pueblo. That these messages it takes things like this to wake people up. We won't, we won't back down from uh, uh, something like this that happened. It just makes us stronger. Will ultimately prevail. Now, we talked about those Pride Weekend festivals happening as scheduled in Denver and in Colorado Springs. Same holds true here in Pueblo. Organizers tonight telling me that the Pride Festival, the Pride Weekend, will be happening here in August as scheduled. We're live in Pueblo tonight. Greg Miller, KRDO News Channel 13. All right. Thanks so much, Greg. Well, the Orlando nightclub massacre is the main topic on the campaign trail tonight. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have different responses to the attack in Orlando. Trump doubled down on his ban on Muslim immigrants coming into the U.S. He also says Clinton is too scared to say the words radical Islam. And her continuing reluctance to ever name the enemy broadcasts weakness across the entire world. Whether you call it radical jihadism, radical Islamism, I think they mean the same thing. I'm happy to say either. But what I won't do, because I think it is dangerous for our efforts to defeat this threat, is to demonize and demagogue and, you know, declare war on an entire religion. By the way, you can find continuing coverage of the massacre in Orlando, including an updated list of the victims. It's over at our website, KRDO.com. More than two weeks after a crash landing, the Thunderbirds will fly the skies once again for an air show this weekend. It's new for you at 10 o'clock. There was a stand down since one of the F 16s went down right after the Air Force Academy graduation. That happened near Peterson Air Force Base. Major Alex Turner, who piloted that jet, will fly as soon as he is physically and mentally ready. That's according to the team commander. The Thunderbirds will put on a show in Ocean City, Maryland. This weekend. Well, in court today, the Colorado Springs man who police say broke off an ankle monitor and killed two people. Accused murderer Glenn Galloway was advised of the charges he's facing. Police say Galloway is responsible for the death of Janice Nam, his former girlfriend. She was found dead in her home two weeks ago. Galloway is also connected to the murder of Marcus Anderson, who was found dead in a storage unit last week. We're working to get you more information on both murders. Pueblo police are searching tonight for the person who pulled the trigger in a drive-by shooting. It happened in the 2600 block of Burgonia Street. That's on the city's south side. Police say they're looking for a black or dark blue small four-door BMW with tinted windows. One person was shot but took himself to the hospital. Police say the victim was targeted. Anyone with information is asked to call Pueblo police or Crime Stoppers at 542-STOP. 
The severe thunderstorm warning has been allowed to expire in El Paso County. We still have a flash flood warning, though, that is going to remain in effect because of the heavy rain that has moved through. I will show you when these storms are expected to finally move out of here coming up after the break. It has been a very active day around southern Colorado, and we're still tracking storms out there right now. Flash flood warnings still in effect until 1245. These warnings include Colorado Springs, Fountain Security, Widefield. The heaviest rain, though, continuing to slide off toward the east. We still have the potential for some small hail as well to the south of Highway 94 and also just toward the north of Ellicott. This is just part of a long line of storms that extends all the way up into northeastern Colorado. This line of storms is going to keep on sliding off toward the east. As it does so, things will begin to quiet down from west to east tonight. Thank you to everybody who's still submitting pictures out there of the incredible amounts of lightning that we have had around the Colorado Springs area. Thank you to Sherry for submitting that to our Facebook page. Still getting not only rain to pile up, but also hail around the area, which is again why we have the flash flood warning in effect. Brian sent us that photo and another great one from Kimberly. Thank you to everybody for sharing your photos with us throughout the day on Facebook and Twitter. If you can safely get pictures for us, we'd love to use them on TV. Show you what is actually happening on the ground level. It really helps us tell the weather story better. So, thank you to everybody. I want to show you what's going to happen here through the rest of the night. Storms are going to keep on shifting off toward the east. By 2 o'clock in the morning, we may still have some lingering rain out near the Colorado Kansas state line, but that comes to an end by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning may have some areas of patchy low clouds, maybe even a bit of very light drizzle out across the far eastern plains, but for most, it is going to be a dry start to the day and it's going to be much, much. Much quieter out there tomorrow than it was out there today. I do expect plenty of sunshine through the afternoon. The only exception will be up across the high country where we may have a few spotty showers during the late afternoon and evening. This is a look at 5 o'clock. I do expect temperatures tomorrow to be noticeably warmer and again, conditions much quieter. We're keeping in that 10% chance for a few spotty showers early in the day, but I expect everything for the most part to be dry, not only tomorrow, but all the way through the work week and into the weekend. Temperatures get back into the 90s. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday will stay there through the weekend, drop temperatures slightly on Monday, but we have a much quieter pattern of weather setting up for us here in southern Colorado. Pueblo 89 degrees tomorrow, 95 on Wednesday, upper 90s expected Thursday into Friday, mid 90s over the weekend. And take a look at that, a dry seven day forecast. It has been a while since we have had one of those. Canyon City 85 tomorrow, 92 on Wednesday. Temperatures in the mid to lower 90s as we head through the weekend, a dry forecast also. In Canyon City. Teller County, 69 degrees tomorrow. Again, a 10% chance for a few lingering storms. 74 degrees on Wednesday, though, will keep 70s to near 80s as we head into your Friday and through the weekend. If you have any outdoor weekend plans, Mother Nature looks like she is going to cooperate. So it looks like she got kind of all of the tough weather 
out of the way on Monday, which I suppose maybe is a good thing. I want to remind you to get our Storm Tracker 13 weather app, something that a lot of folks told me firsthand helped them out today and this evening as these storms rolled through. It's free for your iPhone and your Android. You can get alerts sent to your phone if severe weather is in your neighborhood. You can also track the storms along with us. Again, it's free. All you have to do is search for Storm Tracker 13 weather. Connect with us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Share your photos with us. And don't forget that we are always tracking the storms on Caridio.com. Yeah. And with all that widespread damage we saw, mm -hmm. no reports of any major injuries. So. Thank yeah. goodness. Good yeah, this is right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks, you Rachel. Well, the Broncos are sporting some bling. Yeah, but there's a little problem on that big ring right there for defensive coordinator Wade Phillips. That's coming up. Welcome back. Police say two Pueblo men are in custody tonight after officers found them with nearly $100,000 worth of illegal drugs. Police say Angel Alvarez Alvarado and Angel Dominguez Pena had more than $85,000 worth of crack cocaine and heroin between the two of them. The bus started with a traffic stop last month and the investigation developed from there. They're both charged with possession with intent to distribute. CSU Pueblo will become the first school of its kind to conduct medical marijuana research. Pueblo County Commissioners voted today to give a $270,000 grant to the university. The grant will be used by the university for community impact study and medical marijuana research. We're excited about the, uh, the, the basic scientific research, but there's also engineering research in HEM. Uh, and then there's uh, social and economic impact studies that the county wants us to undertake. Those are extremely important. 
That grant is being paid with money from Pueblo County's marijuana excise tax. Well, they're building up the suspense in the finals here. Yeah, they certainly do. They certainly want to keep playing basketball, I would imagine, especially yeah. if you're in Cleveland. And LeBron James, not loved by the Warriors fans tonight, but he sure brought his A game. Was it enough, though, to avoid the final countdown and force a game six? Find out coming up. Mm-hmm. You guys just you see this news. And now, the award-winning News Channel 13 Sports, sponsored by Larry H. Miller Dealerships. <laughs> yeah, no love lost for King James in the Bay tonight as the Cavaliers face their first elimination game of the postseason tonight against the Warriors. Good evening, I'm Nick Rothschild, in for Rob. To the Bay we go. Andre Iguodala gets the starting nod for the suspended Draymond Green. He's tasked with stopping LeBron. No luck in the first half. LeBron attacking the rim. Also had the jump shot working, but he makes his money in the paint. James scored 25 points in the first half alone. Cavs asserting themselves in the second. Kyrie Irving catches fire. He scores 41. LeBron James, he nearly messed around and got a triple-double. King goes for 41, 16, and 7 as we head to game six on Thursday. The only thing that matters is what happened in between these four lines. Uh, our guys uh, understood that this was I mean, it's the final countdown. You know, We had to come out mentally focused, mentally prepared, mentally sharp. But we're just happy we got another day. That's all we can ask for. We got another day to survive. 
The Colorado Springs Sky Sox returned home tonight to face the Iowa Cubs, or so they thought. Heavy rain postponed tonight's game. They rescheduled the game for Tuesday and will be playing a double header against the Cubs. First game begins at 4:30. Despite starting the month of June tied atop the PCL's Northern Division, they'll start tomorrow in third place. We're now over a third of the way through the 2016 MLB season, and shocker, the Rockies aren't mathematically eliminated yet. They're only three games below 500 and just four and a half games out of the wild card spot, if that mattered at all right now. They've also scored the third most runs in the National League and have the second highest batting average, slugging percentage, and OPS. Great offense there for the Rockies. Colorado had the night off. They'll host the Yankees in an inter interleague series beginning tomorrow. Colorado Springs switchbacks are now less than 24 hours away from their rematch with the Colorado Rapids in the U.S. Open Cup. Take on the Rapids at Dick's Sporting Goods Park Tuesday night. Kick off at 7 p.m. Last year, Rapids won in convincing fashion 4-1, but the scoreline was a little deceiving as the switchbacks had a player sent off with a questionable red card. They got a red card uh, in the game last year, so hopefully we can, you know, play them 11v11. Uh, 11 11. They're a much better team this year, so and so are we. So I think it's going to be a nice matchup, and of course I'm looking forward, and I want to have some bragging rights. We finished tonight with a case of mistaken identity. Broncos defensive coordinator Wade Phillips thought he was receiving his Super Bowl 50 championship ring last night, but instead of Phillips, the piece of jewelry read Peters. Phillips tweeted about the ordeal after he realized the mistake. Justin says they're going to get Phillips a new correct ring within the week, so the mistake will be fixed. Could be linked, that mistake, to director of college scouting Adam Peters, but it is worth noting Peters' ring was just fine. We had two Peters and no Phillips rings. Go figure. That's a look at sports. We'll be right back.
A flash flood warning is still in effect for Colorado Springs Fountain Security Whitefield until 1245. The heaviest rain, though, shifting off toward the east into eastern El Paso County soon. Elbert and Lincoln County, these storms will come to an end by the time you wake up tomorrow morning with a much drier and warmer day expected. Check in at 430 with Good Morning Colorado for more. Hey, stay safe out there.